Mike McDaniel is failing the Miami Dolphins. And on today's show, we are going to discuss the numbers behind the Miami Dolphins offense through four weeks, why things have gone so wrong, and what we can potentially do to fix it. This is Dolphins Today by Chat Sports. I am Nick Roloff. And before we get into why the offense has been so bad, make sure you are subscribed. Make sure you have your notifications turned on because we have over 61K subscribers at the channel right now, which is just flat out phenomenal. But only 14.8% of you have your notifications turned on. That's 9.1 thousand. We drop videos on the daily basis, sometimes multiple times a day. And when we go live, never miss a thing of Dolphins content by having your notifications turned on. So click that bell icon and select all, not just personalized. All right, when you think about this Dolphins season so far, even if you take out Tua Tungvaloa and his injury and him being out the past two weeks, if the Dolphins just had a below-average offense, I'm not asking for average, just slightly below average, so let's say ranked anywhere between 16 and 22, they would be 2-2. Two and two. They really, really would. Because when the Dolphins' numbers start to come in through four weeks, they don't have a below-average offense. They have the worst offense in all of football. They are 32nd in scoring. They are 26th in total yards, 24th in rushing, 33rd in passing. And in their third down rate, the money down, staying on the field, 25th. When you compile all of these numbers, there is only one conclusion you can draw after watching this team through four weeks. They are the worst offense in the National Football League. And the sad part is, by the way, even when Tua was fully healthy for seven quarters, practically, it still wasn't that good. They struggled against the Jaguars' defense. They only scored 20 points. They only scored two touchdowns. They only scored 10 points against the Buffalo Bills. Like, they were still struggling, and it was not pretty. They had the big play to Tyree Kill in week one, the 80-yard touchdown pass. But other than that, everything has been a battle. The explosive offense that we saw over the past two seasons with Mike McDaniel first off starting in Miami, this has simply been non-existent. And I know a lot of people are just going to say, you don't have your quarterback one. This offense is tailor-made for him. Well, when you have an offensive mind like Mike McDaniel and a play caller like him, that everyone around the league said that he made Tua Tungvaloa. Him and Tyreek have made Tua. Well, then why are the numbers so staggering without Tua for Mike McDaniel? We've shown this graphic over the past couple of days. It's been a flat-out embarrassing offensive display for Mike McDaniel in Miami every time Tua has been out. And it's even a bad thing that there's been six games that Tua has missed. But look at the differential. Points per game, down 10. Passing yards per game, down 60. Passing touchdowns and interceptions are ridiculously bad. Like, at what point do we have to sit here and say that Mike McDaniel, even though he has brought a very fun, innovative offense to Miami, is not as effective without Tua Tungvaloa? And maybe he tailor-made this offense to specifically Tua. And even if he did that, and that's the issue at hand, that's even more concerning that he didn't have a backup quarterback. He felt confident in running the offense the same through them or putting all of your eggs in one basket. I got to be honest, I am pretty fired up and upset about head coach Mike McDaniel right now. But I want to know your thoughts down in the comment section. How upset are you with Mike McDaniel? Scale it 1 to 10. I'm going to give you my number in just a second, so stay tuned for that. And if you get hit with a YouTube ad break, let it play, scroll down, and drop your numbers. I'm going with the maximum 10. I am. A, I, I could not be more upset with Mike McDaniel because I truly believe, and maybe I was way too optimistic, delusional. But I do think that he is a good enough offensive schematic coach and a play caller to have an offense, even without its starting quarterback, with the weapons you have in Tyree Kill, Jalen Wild, Devon HM, to at least have a below average offense. I'm not asking you to be top 10 in the league without Tua. I'm just asking you to be in that 16 to 22 range so you don't have the worst offense in football. I'm furious with how things have played out. And when you look at some other numbers as well, Dolphins expected points added on a play-by-play -play basis, EPA per play, negative .258. It's last in the National Football League. The fact that I, I know it's tough, not everybody is going to add points to their total on every single play. You're going to have negative plays. But the fact that it's 
negative 0.258. That is so bad. Like every metric, there is no way that you can go to your friend, your family member, talking to a random person on the street, and say when you're talking about this offense that they haven't been the worst in football. It has been. And I want to say this one last time. Last time I'm going to say it on today's show. I understand Tua is out. But when you have the weapons of Tyreek, Jalen Waddell, Devon Achan, sure, the offensive line isn't great. And you have a coach like Mike McDaniel who is thought of as an offensive guru, offensive genius, and you have the worst offense in football. Like, I am blaming Mike McDaniel, and he is failing this Miami Dolphins football team because the defense has played well enough to be at least 500 this season. They really, really have. And it's disappointing to see how the defense has been I mean, I left on a hook, I'm going to say, and we're going to show some of the numbers on the defensive statistics, excuse me, coming up in just a second. And some of the numbers are not pretty. But I am here to tell you that it's because the offense has been unable to stay on the football field. And when you have the type of possession difference that Miami has had through the first four weeks where the defense is on the field significantly longer than the offense, it's just hard to keep opponents out of the end zone when you're on the field for 35, 40 minutes a game. It just simply can't happen. And we're going to talk about the defense more coming up in just a second and a solution for this offense. But we are sponsored by Game Time, the number one way to get your tickets. And they make your life so much easier when you're trying to go to a live event, whether it be a comedy show, concert, sporting event. With a new feature called Game Time Picks, it allows you to get tickets to see your favorite teams play live even easier. Filters out the fluff to show you only incredible deals on great seats so you don't have to waste time searching through thousands of Tickets, lowest price guaranteed, or game time will credit you 110% of the difference. If you find a seat in a different ticketing service, cheaper in the same exact spot, yeah, you heard that correctly, 110% of the difference. You also get to see a panoramic view from your seat in the app before you buy. That's one of the parts I love the most. When I went to USC, LSU, in Las Vegas a month ago, I used game time, and the boys here at Chat Sports got our tickets locked in because we were able to see where we were going to sit in the stadium and it was so easy for us to purchase so take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time download the app create an account and use code chat sports for twenty dollars off your first purchase terms apply but again create an account and redeem code c-h-a-t-s-p-o-r-t-s for twenty dollars off download game time today what time is it game time all right let's flip it over to the defense now because here are some of the statistics through four weeks in the national football league Yards per game allowed, 6th in the National Football League, 25th in points per game, tied for 9th in touchdowns allowed, 25th in sacks, 18th in turnovers, and the most startling number to me, the third down rate. How often is Miami allowing their opponent to stay off the field, or stay on the field? Only 23.8% of the time. That's first in the National Football League. So when the Dolphins get teams to third down, they're the best in the NFL at actually converting on that opportunity and getting them off the football field. And despite some of the injuries, Bradley Chubb is yet to play this year. Jalen Phillips left the game halfway through. Kendall Fuller missed this past week. Anthony or David Long Jr. missed this week. Like despite some injuries, this defense has impressed me. And I think some of those numbers you saw are inflated because of the offense not being able to extend drives and allow the defense to get an extended rest and a time to make adjustments to opposing offenses and catch their breath. Like, that's where that points per game comes into play. Like, that number would be way down if they had more time to create adjustments on the sideline and catch their breath. Like, same thing with the sacks. Like, it comes into play when your offense can't stay on the football field and give your defense a rest. I love the way Anthony Weaver in his first year has been calling plays, and I love the way this defense has performed. I just wish the offense could match them halfway. You meet them halfway, guess what? You got a football team that isn't one in three and having the second pick if the draft was today. Got to be better offense. But grade the Dolphins defense. A, B, C, D, or F. Don't give me a rookie number too. You don't got to give me an even. You give me minus, you can be plus. Right now I'm giving the Dolphins defense an A minus. I think they've been terrific uh, considering the circumstances. But let's talk about how the offense could be fixed because if I'm going to come out here and call out Mike McDaniel – and say there's issues, and he's failing the Miami Dolphins. Well, I have to come up with some solutions of my own on how I think there can be some upward trajectory for this offense. Well, number one, I think the Dolphins need to just simply run the ball better. I know, easier said than done, but that's one thing they need to do. 
Number two, Mike McDaniel needs to utilize under center play action more. And we'll show some numbers on that in a second. But let's start with the run game. Because through four weeks, they are 24th in the NFL in running attack. 97.8 yards per game. It just simply has not been good for Miami. And as good as Devon Achan has been in total yards, when you account for his uh, attack in the passing game as well, it hasn't been roses for Achan in his second year on the ground. 165 yards, 3.1 yards per carry. And the reason why that's so startling to me, and I want to call out the 3.1 yards per carry, because in last season for the Dolphins, only in 11 games, but he averaged 7.8 yards per carry. And I know, I did say that it was not going to happen this year again. And it's simply impossible for him to average 8 yards per carry again. His 100 carries for almost 800 yards last season is just an anomaly as a rookie. Simply not going to happen once again. But I would expect A-Chan to run 4.7, 5.0 with his speed, his explosiveness. He should be able to create larger plays than this. And the Dolphins' rushing attack with Devon A-Chan has not been good. You look back at week one against Jacksonville, 10 carries for 24 yards. This past week, 10 carries for 15 yards. Like It has not been explosive. Why is that? Well, I think it's because you're losing two key pieces on interior of the offensive line. Think about last season's offensive line, when they had one of the best rushing attacks in all football. Connor Williams, your starting center for most of the season. Robert Hunt, your starting right guard. Well, Robert Hunt's in Carolina, and Connor Williams coming off an ACL is in Seattle. You thank Chris Greer for not addressing the interior offensive line. Sure, they signed Aaron Brewer, and he's been actually pretty decent. He was uh, the seventh graded center in the National Football League going into week four. I haven't checked back to see where he is now. But, I mean, that left guard, right guard combination of Robert Jones and Liam Eikenberg has just been an absolute joke. And you've been unable to run the ball on the perimeter as well between Austin Jackson and Teron Armstead. Every sweep, every pitch has not been successful for Miami. They have simply not been able to run the football through four weeks, and it's hindering their ability to set up their passing game with the running game. And that's a serious issue. But how about that second number I brought up and the second solution? Can we go under center for some play action passes? They have thrown the ball five times under center in 2024. So what does that tell you? Well, every time the Dolphins line up in an I formation, they line up under center. The defense knows they're going to run the football because if they reading on the scouting report, and I know it, and you know it, that they've only thrown the ball five times under center, why would they ever believe the Dolphins are going to just either do a three-step drop and a quick pass or a play-action pass and try to have a shot play? Because they don't do it. They, they don't, and they're predictable when they go under center. They know it's going to be a zone run. They know it's going to be a pitch to Devon A. Chan. When you are predictable, you are not able to create those chunk plays and keep the defense on their toes. And then how about this as well? A staggering number. 96% of drop back passes for the quarterbacks through four weeks, whether it's Huntley, Thompson, Boyle, or Tua, have come out of the shotgun. So you've thrown the ball five times under center and 96% of your drop backs out of shotgun. If you change that up, and even if the run game isn't as effective as what we have wanted, if you simply have one single back, I formation doesn't matter, and you go back and fake a run, even if you don't run the football good, you are creating a split second of hesitation on the linebackers where they can't, if they're playing a zone, take their step backs initially. They have to freeze. They have to stay there and either drive towards the football because they think it's going to run or just hold there and hold their position, which will allow Hill, Waddle, to get over the middle of the uh, defense and get behind the linebacker. So your quarterback can do that play action, hit his back leg, and fire on the football. To me, I'm not going to say these two things are going to fix the Dolphins' offense and all of a sudden they're scoring 30 points a game with Tyler Huntley. But can we run the ball more efficiently and then throw the ball under center more, utilizing play action under center? Because you haven't done it through four weeks, and if you start mixing it in, you're going to be harder to defend because you simply aren't as predictable. All right, that's going to do it for today's show. Make sure you are subscribed to the channel because, like I said, we're breaking down everything here news, rumors, segments like this where we talk about Mike McDaniel and the offense. Make sure you're subscribed because we do a lot of work here at Dolphins Today, and hopefully I see you in the next video. Go Fins.